Hi everyone, this is Adam Twardoch. Let's talk about FontLab. Today I wanted to talk about the different kind of mechanisms that you can use to extend or expand your glyph set. So just as a quick overview, um, we're talking about sort of assembling glyphs from other parts. That's going to be what I will be talking about. So first I'm going to talk about layers and masters, then components, um, anchors, anchor expressions, and then um, about, about ways to build composite uh, glyphs, so glyphs that refer to other components. Um, then I'll talk about attached components, which is um, something that is um, a bit unique to FontLab. Then about auto layers, which is um, another thing, another much quicker mechanism to create entire glyphs using little text recipes, and then non-spacing components, and then elements and element references, uh, which are a different uh, thing from components in a sense. So components, I'm sure many people have heard of, and element and element references are, are uh, interesting um, and slightly yeah, unique to font lab. So let's um, first, Let's just get the basics. In FontLab, uh, each glyph has layers, either one layer or m multiple layers. And these layers have different functions. There can be a mask or background layer. There can be some technical layers or some temporary uh, layers where you, you know, store some extra, uh, maybe like a, a, a different version of your drawing. But primarily, layers are used for variation, and um, each layer in a glyph has a name. And then in the font, in the font there are font masters. And a font master has um, is a special kind of object of a font which holds uh, things like uh, font dimensions, uh, kerning classes, and has a designated location on the uh, on the axis that you've defined, um, like the weight or width. And then um, in FontLab, we've done it so that uh, the glyph layers and the font masters need to match by name. So if you have a font master called bold, then FontLab will look in all the glyphs for the layer called bold. If it finds it, then it will highlighted in a bold uh, font, but it will use that layer for the interpolation of the bold master. There may be glyphs that don't have a particular layer, then the default master is used. And uh, there are some um, more advanced ways to work with intermediate masters, but I'm not going to cover them, uh, cover them now. So you can see here we have um, a regular layer active, and we have the layers and masters panel um, in the sort of top right here. Um, and there we could switch between the regular and the bold masters. They're both shown in bold because there are font masters uh, corresponding to them. As I said, in font info, you can just define masters. And there's also axes. I've talked about uh, axes and masters in FontLab. There's a, if you go to fontlab.tv, uh, there's a, a couple of FontLab 7 playlists, and there's one uh, talk, uh, Make Your Variations Better, I believe it is called, that I've um, done a few months ago. And I explained the whole, the way that FontLab 7 uh, handles variable fonts in more detail, like the whole model, and also explain what these different um, pages of the font info, for instance, uh, mean. OK, so components. Well, components are an old technology that originated in TrueType. In TrueType, they were 
um, parts of the actual final font format. And components are a way to point or refer to another glyph. And in case of FontLab, um, usually or by default in the same layer. So uh, you may have a glyph such as A on the light on the uh, left, uh, which contains some contours. And then you may have another a glyph, acute comb, uh, combining acute that contain, uh, contains some other uh, contours. And then the A acute glyph will contain two components. And each component has a position and optionally can also have other kind of live transformations like uh, rotation or slant or flip. Uh, not all of them are natively supported in the final format. So if you use transformations, live transformations that aren't supported in true type flavored open type, then FontLab will decompose or turn these components into plain outlines so that they can get exported into the final font. In true type flavored open type, you can have like either a fully contour based glyphs so you have just a set of contours in a glyph or you can have a composite glyph which is one that is built out of one or more components but you can't mix components and contours in one glyph in the final true type uh, flavor ttf format in fontlab and in other font editors you can so you may have uh, a piece of drawing and then uh, that is explicitly directly done in your glyph and then add a component. In these cases, again, on export, FontLab will decompose, turn the glyph into um, a fully contour-based glyph. But if you only use components in a glyph, then by default, that will export as a com composite glyph, which is much smaller because the duplication is, you know, is not happening. The most important idea behind the component based workflow and other ways to assemble glyphs is that you want to do it you want to make your changes once and they should populate to all the composite glyphs now there's one more thing and that is anchors these are special named points that exist on the layer and the most important idea is corresponding anchors this matching is done by name so in a base glyph such as a you would have an anchor with the name name, for instance, top. And then in a marked glyph, such as acute comb, you would have um, the same, uh, an anchor with the same name prefixed by underscore, for instance, underscore top. And then FontLab will do um, the matching and they will snap one to another. And this is uh, a convention that uh, FontLab Studio 5 used and then other uh, editors, including FontLab 7, um, carry on. In a glyph like A, you can define the anchor top, uh, move it somewhere, and uh, there's an anchors and pins panel where you can set its additional properties. So the name, but also a position, and also a position done through expressions. Uh, this panel shows all the anchors in the current glyph layer. And then in a uh, mark glyph, you would have underscore top. If you create a composite glyph, like an A acute, but also from the same behavior of matching those two corresponding anchors, the mark attachment feature can be generated. It's turned off by default in FontLab, but you can turn it on in the export profile. The reason why it's off by default is that it contributes a lot to the font size and depending on how you used your anchors, you don't necessarily always want this automation to happen. So you may uh, want to use it or not. It's very useful to use it, but uh, we had cases where you know users were negatively surprised because they only had a couple of anchors in the glyph set and in other glyphs, they didn't have anchors and it was weird to have a partial mark attachment feature. Anyhow, anchors can have expressions and I'm gonna just show how it works. So um, so this is my uh, my font lab, this is my A acute. So you can see this is my uh, acute combining acute and this is the 
uh, top anchor and here I have the top anchor sorry underscore top there here top and I can position it freely right now this is already placed and this is important so the placement of anchors uh, this this mechanism that I talked about the matching it only happens by default when you generate the glyph then FontLab inserts the um, base glyph and then also the mark glyph in the position dictated by the location of the anchors at the time. But then those two components in the A acute glyph are fully movable. Now, in FontLab 7, you can use an attached component. If I have this mark and I say this is an attached component, then basically it becomes linked to that anchor so it uses the anchor live and i can still position the base glyph independently the attached component follows this linking through so attached components is kind of like a is slightly more automated than just manual positioning using anchors and now when i when i move the anchor you can see that um this positioning changes. I can also move this anchor up because the actual location of the final mark depends on the anchor on both ends. One useful thing is if I shift drag from the ruler a guide and I give it, uh, I'll give it a name like a top, I can use an expression so I can link the Y, the vertical position of the top anchor to that guide. So if I do this, uh, this is a font guide. This uh, anchor now is still movable in the X side, but it will update its Y position when I change the position of the guide. And this can happen across all glyphs or numerous glyphs. So you may, using um, expressions, you can have the position of different anchors shift up and down when you move a particular font guide. The X position, there is a way to use the expression such as center, which is the middle of the bounding box, or width divided by two. That's the half of the advanced width. That's also possible, although I must admit this is um, not so useful maybe for uh, italic fonts because it doesn't quite yet take into account the sort of italic correction. Now, building com uh, composites. Now, this is how, how do you get them done, right? So there is a preference in the operations section, new glyphs. And here we have two checkboxes. We have one, something called add components. So when you create a new glyph, and this is on, FontLab will try to build the content of the layer the composite glyph using uh, some built-in recipes. Uh, so, so if I had the A and I had the acute or acute combi uh, combining acute, and I would create A acute, it would insert um, the glyphs and it would also uh, use the positioning of the anchors. However, as I said, at the moment, that would be like a static operation and I would uh, require the glyphs to be present at the time and the anchors to be present at the time. Say OK, remove the I A acute. So for instance, if I pick an encoding, which is like a template for a particular glyphs, right here we can see that there is a, a cell that has been reserved by the encoding, but it's not yet filled. If I double click it, then FontLab will build not an auto layer. I can turn this into an auto layer by clicking this button or I can also toggle the auto layer from the context menu. If I turn um, a composite glyph into an auto layer, basically font lab completely, I'm going to turn it off to show it to you. So now I've got this, maybe I even change this component, right? But I turn on auto layer, it completely rebuilds the glyph layer that depends on whether I use the alt key. If I use the alt key, it will do it for all the masters. And now I see here there's a little thing called A plus acute comb. So this is the recipe. So what FontLab does, it has its internal uh, list of recipes, ways to build the composite glyphs. And you can extend this list of built-in recipes. And you can also just edit it. If I change this here to C dot acute comb, it would instantly rebuild it. And whenever I make changes to 
anchor positions in the base uh, glyphs or to the designs and also to the advanced width of the base glyph of the A, all the other layers will automatically update. This is not editable at all. If I turn it off, then it becomes fully editable, but I could also make this component attached and then it would be sort of semi-editable. So the base glyph is movable, fully movable. I can change the side bearings easily, etc. But the mark is attached to the position of the base. There, there are also two other ways. There is font add glyphs, which is like a little Unicode browser. And here you can you can uh, locate different uh, glyphs and and choose to add them. And also there is font generate glyphs. And this is a kind of more advanced place where I can uh, enter names of glyphs or just characters. I can paste the list of um, characters to, to be created. And uh, also I can type these recipes for auto layer or for just a generation. So if I type B plus comb, then I'm getting proposed glyph name, but I could also say B equals B acute. That will be the recipe and then equal sign, you know, the results. So um, this is this is another way where you could have uh, a list of um, maybe a, um, a text file with these recipes, or you can also, if you already have a font that has auto layers or has these recipes, I can select them, I can say uh, text, copy text as recipes. And now I could go font, generate glyphs, paste, and I would get these compositions and the final glyph name. So basically a recipe and equals uh, the final glyph name. So this is a very easy way to rebuild uh, your glyph set from an existing glyph set. And if you do it with auto layers, you can actually add the anchors later and the position will then refine. You know, with auto layers, the point is that you may create, let's say, an A acute auto layer, and you only have the base glyph, the A. You don't have the acute or acute combining yet. Or maybe you have an acute, so it will use the acute. But then if you add acute comb, the combining acute, which actually in those uh, built-in recipes has preference, it will start using the combi uh, acute combining. Unless, of course, you write your own recipe. But you can also write a recipe uh, even if a particular glyph doesn't exist. The moment you add the constituting glyph, it will appear in the auto layers because the auto layers are sort of rebuilt dynamically. There are two different syntaxes for the recipes and they're, they're fairly simple. So the, there's the simple syntax, which is backwards compatible with FontLab Studio 5, where uh, you use the underscore to produce sort of ligatures. So basically you append, you use glyph names and then glyph name underscore glyph name, for instance, F underscore L means take the F and then add the L to the right of the F and extend the advance width by the advance width of the L. You can use single quotes if you're actually, if you want to use glyphs that already use underscore in the name. If you don't provide a final glyph name, then FontLab will use this. If you, but you, you can also say equals and then a different glyph name. And then for marks, it uses the plus. So you can say C plus Karen or A dot Theresis com. If the anchors, the corresponding anchors are there, it will automatically uh, use them. This is the simple syntax. There is a couple of more operators, but uh, I think using the anchors is much better than using these, these special operators. And then there is the extended syntax, which is compatible with a glyph uh, composition syntax developed by Frederick Berlain and uh, kind of built into uh, Robofont. It's a bit better, I think, to some extent than our simple syntax. Well, it's been developed, you know, after some thinking. So you can use the ampersand to combine with extending the advance width. 
if you use the plus, then it means that the the glyphs that follow the plus sign are considered marks. So they are inserted onto the advance width of the base glyph, but they don't contribute to the advance width any further. There's also ways to kind of override the metrics. So you can set the final width to be something else, or maybe the final side bearings to be something else that's using the circumflex. And then the positioning is where you kind of have to specify either for the marks that you insert, either a final position or the name of the anchor. So the equivalent in the extended syntax, the extended syntax recipe, they start with the uh, equal sign. So a dot acute comb, but w and that will use the, uh, the, the anchors. If I take, if I say equals a, uh, you may insert spaces here now uh, with the extended syntax a plus acute uh, a acute comb it will position the second glyph at the origin point but if you use the at right after that and provide the name of the anchor like top then it will use the the top and the underscore top pair it's less sort of fully automatic or magical but it actually is more specific and you know exactly what you're doing so the extended syntax uh, versus the uh, simple syntax. And by the way, if I click this and press Shift F1 or use the uh, help panel, I get the summary of, of the syntax. Hold F1, that's quick help. And that will show a slightly, a much shorter sort of summary of what it is, especially for the tools it's useful. You know, sometimes there are some uh, modifiers like Alt, Control, uh, quick help uh, reminds you what they do. This syntax is actually quite more powerful. You can flip components. You can uh, provide a transformation matrix. The non-spacing components, this is, uh, the idea is if I do something like iMacron, for instance, this is the non-spacing component. So the macron is non-spacing. I'm going to turn it off. And now you can see the side bearings are dictated by this wider mark. If I used dotless i as my left side bearing and the same for, the, for my right side bearing, this is of course now pretty wrong because I've locked the side bearings that point to a base glyph, but the mark glyph is larger. So the mark glyph is now sort of interfering with these metric expressions. But if I specify the mark as non-spacing or the component as non-spacing, it vanishes from the bounding box from which uh, metrics are calculated. So it's just a way to make, you know, a component kind of transparent to uh, the spacing. And um, when you open existing fonts, you can decide whether FontLab should detect composites. If you turn that on, then FontLab will actually, if you open a font like an OTF that doesn't have a component, it will try to rebuild composites from plain outlines. And if you turn off non-spacing components, then all the components will read as traditional components. But if, if you turn it on, which is on by default, then FontLab will set this non-spacing flag to the marks so you don't have to worry about, about it because you really don't want to, you know, set your side bearings based on a position of a particular mark, usually. Elements. So elements are something that elements are also used for color and elements are also used when you assign a different, um, you know, brush, power brush properties. But I will mention how you can assemble glyphs uh, using elements rather than components. And that's, yeah, I'll just draw a, a triangle. And now I do copy and then I say uh, paste element reference. It shows that they're connected. I'll turn off this visualization. It's in view, show element references. And while the element panel is active, I'll, I'll open the maybe the transform panel and say this is 90 
percent or paste another element reference and say it's minus 90 right okay so i could you know start building some particular shape from it and now each element has its own set of contours basically like a box with a particular content and now this these boxes have been duplicated but they all reference the same content so if i double click this when i select this particular segment it also highlights the other ones because they're really kind of the same and i can start you know very very quickly modifying this so this element over here has a rotation 90 degree this element has zero rotation and this element has minus 90 degree rotation so effectively this element is kind of more like a default because the other ones have been transformed but it doesn't really matter all the changes that you do uh, immediately in any place where an element reference appears also happen to other element references and element references have just their own bounding box as the geometry reference so if you move a, a glyph that's the difference if i select the contours in my e and move in relation to the glyph space to the origin point of the e glyph layer then because these are components they also translate it because a component references the content of a particular glyph layer in relation to the origin point to the zero zero point or where the baseline and the left side bearing cross but element reference just has its own box so it's a bit more independent of where it's placed but then it's in many cases you know much more much faster to work because you don't have to create like extra spare glyphs that hold these little pieces and uh, reference them. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.